Hello everyone, I'm back with another crafting video and this time around I'm gonna focus on incursion gloves and caster crit shields. So let's start with the gloves first. As you can see I have a fractured incursion mod, it's a cold resistance and damage with hits against shield enemies. There's also other incursion mods that you can go for instead, which is lightning resistance and crit chance against shocked enemies or fire resistance and flat fire damage against burning enemies. But generally people tend to go with the cold one and this one usually has higher val has value and it's uh, the most expensive one. For shield I then went for uh, life plus one cold and then either spell damage or cold damage, crit chance and any two suffixes. These ones uh, ended up being cold rest and life regen which are really good for my build so I'm not complaining at all. Uh, the one thing uh, I want to say for this shield you could go for fire, you could go for lightning and it would be the same thing. So this is not necessarily uh, cold only. You can just replace the crafting uh, steps with fire or lightning if that's what you need. I'll go over the entire process on how to craft these shields later. As this is a necropolis uh, item, it is quite difficult to craft or at least quite difficult to set up. But once you understand it, it becomes a lot easier and easier the next time. But I also want to showcase a new tool that the community has made for uh, necropolis crafting, which makes it a lot easier for me to share it with you guys. And hopefully it will make it easier to understand than just sharing a craft or exile link. I'll share that one as well, if you know what you are doing, that might be enough for you, but that is something that I want to do to make it easier for you guys. But uh, let's get into the actual details on how to craft stuff. If, if you find this video helpful, please make sure to like and subscribe, leave a comment, it helps a lot. But that's about it. Let's um, start looking at these gloves. So number one thing you need to understand is that sure, this does say fire damage and fire resistance, right? But we want cold damage because, uh, you know, this mod is the best mod, generally. Generally speaking, this is the mod that you want on most builds. How do we get it? Well, we just resist swap from fire to cold. And then when you swap, it also swap the mod. The problem here is that we low rolled on the mod. It's 31 to 50% increased damage. And we want this number to be like 45 or whatever. Well, we can divine it for cheap, relatively cheap. By doing this and then going back to cold. Suddenly it's 43. Is that good enough? Uh, it's not good enough for me here because I want to fracture these. So I'm going to click it a few more times. Hopefully this doesn't take forever. 46, good enough. And we can do the same on these gloves. 46, nice. The problem with these gloves before we fracture them is that they have five modifiers, right? We can make this really easy by uh, using an Eldritch channel and removing a prefix. So if the Searing, war searing Exarch is dominant, remove a prefix modifier. The way we do it is we just apply Searing Exarch and use an Eldritch annulment. Suddenly we have two format gloves that are ready to be fractured. And uh, we, the bases were a lot cheaper than if you were to buy the cold dress with good rolls. This is the search I use for, for this. Basically, I set the eye level to 85 because uh, I want tier 1 suppression usually. Fractured item, no. You can set it to yes, but usually you will get people, you will get items that people try to fracture and break. Corrupted, no. And then all the free mods that you, you can get on gloves. And evasion 1 here uh, guarantees that it is a uh, evasion base. What, I, what you also could do is if you want pure evasion base, which are generally very, like, let me show you real quick. So. You can see that there is like a decent amount of like 50c and lower bases. But if you do 0 armor, 0 ES, suddenly the bases become a lot more expensive starting at 1 divine or even more. So this depends kind of on you on which one you want to go with. I would say if you're going to roll it with expensive essence, like uh, here I probably should have bought a pure evasion. Since I ended up rolling it with uh, deafening essence of envy, then uh, evasion is better as it makes it easier to roll suppression. But if you're gonna roll it with like, I don't know, Anger Essence, for example, for Fire Res, or like Zeal Essence for Attack Speed, something that's relatively cheap, or you can use a Shrieking, I would say you can just end up uh, fracturing it on a hybrid base. And uh, fracturing yours are quite cheap. Oh my god, we made huge profit here. I don't know how much these actually are, but let me double check. Item level 85 search it shows us 25 div i don't know if that's actually accurate let me check the search but i wasn't showing this for profit i was just showing this to you know show show the process 
I mean, hopefully we actually did make money here. <laughs> it looks like we did, which is nice. But uh, fracturing orbs were like 3D yesterday. So this was way cheap. Like, even if you get unlucky, it is still cheaper than buying the fracture if this is the price the fractures go for, right? You have to win 1 in 4, which can be very frustrating, especially if you miss like 7, 8, 10 times. But if fracturing orb is 3D each, buying the bases and whatnot, it probably averages to like uh, 16D per base instead of 25 so the 25d base is correct then i mean you're making profit right or at least you are saving money this is extremely lucky obviously hitting <laughs> hitting it back to back 1 and 16 but uh it's still interesting uh to show the process and that you can uh change the resistances to whatever whatever incursion mod you want and you can divine it with harvest as well so keep that in mind hopefully this helps you one more thing before I go about this, though, is I want to show you how you can actually buy a decent item for cheap. So I've adjusted the search here a little bit. I, you know, removed the evasion uh, requirement. I removed the item level requirement. I, I, and I added a bunch of conditionals. But this should make it a lot easier to look for decent items. So what you do is you can also add more stuff here or remove stuff from here depending on what you actually want to do on your character like you could add accuracy here or you could like remove attack speed because you don't need it or add life regen life recovery right? there is a lot of a uh, lot of room for movement here so just make sure to fit it to your needs but i will be sharing this exact link in the description keep in mind that if i share an exact link stuff might get bought out so you might wanna change stuff a little bit here and look for other items you could add strength decks and there's a lot of suffixes that are actually good right but let me quickly show you what this actually searches so here this already has the cold dress mod so we wouldn't even need to change anything here but it's a pretty decent glove right or this one actually has a fire mod but let's say we want the cold mod again we change fire rest to cold dress suddenly we have decent glove and you can you can scroll through these and try to look for a glove that actually fits your build all I wanted to say is you can actually buy an item that's like already done or close to done and then change the resistance to actually fit to whatever incursion mod you need. Even a mod like this, let's say we want the cold one, we could move this cold resistance to lightning resistance and then the fire resistance to cold in order to get the damage with hits against shield enemies. So even something like this, the cold res here is not a problem. And again, make sure to make the search fit your need like maybe for example you really really want suppression right so you just remove everything else except suppression and you search that and see what you get and you will get some suppression gloves and i feel like there's a lot of room for adjustment and the trace search link that i showed is definitely not a perfect one but it should be good enough to find some upgrades early on before you can actually afford fracturing and uh, if you play around with it a little bit you might be able to find some really good items now let's take a look at the shield so i will grab a craft of exile link so this is the shield i'm looking at right now it's uh, either cold image or spell damage in the same uh, prefix plus one cold and tier two life with crit chance on the suffix so this is our goal it shows the success rate is about 72 percent which is pretty decent and it's in reality it's slightly higher but obviously this is nothing that you can guarantee and uh i actually crafted three shields and two of them missed so i don't know if this number is accurate but when i tried generating a sample a few times i mean this one pretty good it has one dead suffix but pretty good uh this one good this one good one dead suffix there though this one actually rolled lightning damages is really unlucky shouldn't really be happening often this one, it's basically the one I have. So you, you can see that the success rate is decent, right? And again, if you just replace every cold word here with lightning and uh, every lightning here with cold, you can craft the lightning shield and the same for fire. So this is not just for cold, just because you aren't playing like icicle mines or whatever. You can just use this for your, I don't know, spark builds or your fire self-cast incinerate builds, right? Like it, this is a craft that I will probably be using a lot during the league. So I think it's important to understand. Uh, when it comes to the cost, uh, it's not too bad. So this site actually, I, I, don't worry, I will explain a lot. But this site actually calculates the average cost. The thing is here that most of the cost comes from the craft on additional item. If you can actually be bothered buying a lot of corpses, you can get it for cheaper. But I highly recommend uh, going with craft an additional item. 
And uh, the way you do that is you get uh, this craft, 20% chance to craft an additional item, and then you boost it with adjacent coffins. But the adjacent coffin needs to match the monster category on the additional item. So for example, this one, right, is a humanoid. And then we have an undead corpse that sets increased effect of humanoid corpses. This is completely fine. All you care about is the text. You don't care about the monster category on the second coffin. And I know this is GGG. I wish this wasn't the case. The adjacent stuff is what makes this unenjoyable. But uh, it is what it is, man. This is where we are, and we should probably be using it since they are really good. Again, I will just show real quick. This this grave would be where you want to place this one. So this is how it's uh, oriented. This is the corner that I'm clicking on right now. Top, like I, I call it bottom left. And then these ones, the 20% additional is this one and this one. So it's like a triangle over here. It's the same triangle as here. And then you place four adjacent that match the match the category around them. This will guarantee you get free items. Obviously, you only do this if you, your craft is expensive or you cannot be bothered uh, buying more corpses. I do it to save time because buying more corpses is annoying. And usually you can resell the results if they hit even somewhat decent. So, yeah. And then, uh, you know, additional row, like row effect. This is grave row effect or whatever the exact wording is. Grave column effect. And then the rest should be somewhat self-explanatory. Uh, we do plus two explicit because uh, it's really hard to roll a shield if you don't go for six mod. So generally most shields that I will craft will be six modded. Uh, divine six here means uh, this craft. Reroll modifier values of each explicit modifier six times, keeping the best outcome. This is actually very, very underrated and I wish I showed that more in my last video. Look at the divine on the shield. Perfect life, perfect cold damage. Almost perfect cold, uh, sorry, almost perfect crit chance, perfect cold dress, and almost perfect life regen. And all it was is one course of the divine. Highly recommend putting one or two in your uh, in your craft. It's super super good. And uh, now I will show the craft in game. I will obviously share both this side and craft of exile. I hope you can find this. Uh, I mean, it's not really intuitive, but I hope you can understand what is happening here. If not, just ask questions and I will try to help. Ideally, ask in Twitch chat, but if you ask under the YouTube video, I will also try to answer them. It is uh, it is complicated, I'm not gonna lie. But this, uh, this, uh, this straight site or this website actually makes it a lot easier. It also allows you to straight up search for them in here. It takes a little bit to load, but you know. It's very, very good. Highly recommend using uh, Necropolis Path of Tools. It, it just makes life a lot easier. And then when you buy them, you can take them off and uh, you can keep track a lot easier. It is what it is, man. This is what we have to do to get the gear, but the gear is well worth it. Now, let me show it in game how my crafting went yesterday. And that is going to be the last thing to show in this video. So a few things I want to highlight here. Make sure to use item level 84. If it's not 84, just remove... Uh, like one increase chance to call to increase the item level to 84 by plus one item level corpse. It's usually not going to be lower than 83 unless you are crafting it with your own corpses that you farm all in lower uh, eye level zones. Because most of the corpses you're going to be buying are going to be 83 or 84, so keep that in mind. Uh, one thing that I messed up is I crafted a shield that actually has really high, rec high int requirements, so keep this in mind. My shield has 159 int requirement and I actually had issues getting that in. What you should do instead is probably craft a, like a chiming spirit shield or something. This is what I recommend in um, Craft of Exile too. It's uh, suddenly 118 int, right? And you don't have the int issues that I had because my character was not smart enough. But uh, let's take a look at the craft. This is basically what uh, the Necropolis tool is showing. It's slightly better than Craft of Exile, not by much, but this is just because we are actually using increased row effect and increased column effect now that it's easier to share the layout. So it is slightly better than Craft of Exile odds. It should be about 75% to hit. And uh, again, 6 mod item. This is increasing cold, life, and crit to try to get the stuff we want. Obviously, this is decreasing the stuff we don't want. Whenever you are crafting, you should go like checklist, check by check. If you want to craft fire and lightning, swap whichever of them with cold. And uh, the last thing I want to show is, again, this one, the rear values of each explicit modifier. Super underrated craft. I don't see enough people use it. And 209% chance to craft an additional item. 
Let's see how it went. I was pretty disappointed with my results honestly, but I'm glad that I got the one shield I really wanted. This is the shield I'm currently using. That one is insane and it's basically exactly what I wanted, except I would prefer elemental avoidance instead of cold rest, but it's still really good. Second shield, it hit mana instead of spell damage or cold damage. Still usable, but definitely a lot worse. And the last shield, again, hit mana. I actually had a lot of mana, which was surprising that it didn't, you know, it didn't go better. This one is actually, like, quite decent. It's just missing the spell damage, otherwise it has the perfect modifiers I, I wanted. I don't know. Uh, obviously, 75% is 75%. Crap exile might be wrong. Hard to say unless you have bigger sample size. But all I can say is this does work well enough and uh, I'm not unhappy with the way I crafted it. I mean, it, it netted me the shield I really wanted and I can recommend this further. I hope this was helpful for you guys. If it was, please make sure to like, comment, subscribe. Again, it helps a lot and I appreciate it much. And I will see you guys next time. Bye everyone.